Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, and they actually wrote a note to the ECB begging them to stop reducing interest rates because it's killing them, which obviously means their derivatives book underlying it, underlying their, uh, their, their cratering business is collapsing. So again, you know, you're seeing the news everywhere uh, of everything falling apart. In fact, I wrote today, well, we'll go on to the big news in the gold market today. I'll keep everyone in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> so isn't Deutsche Bank, don't they have a huge exposure to uh, derivatives? Yeah, they are the biggest uh, derivatives purveyor uh, I either either on the planet or maybe second to, to JP Morgan. I think they're actually bigger. And uh, look, the fact that they that they that their stock has fallen to way below the 2008 lows and their and their credit default swaps are now surging as 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 companies like Bear Stearns and, and Lehman Brothers uh, did back in 2008 shows you they're goner. There's no I, I'm telling everyone now they are so a goner. It's not even funny. Uh, they are going to be the next Lehman Brothers if someone else doesn't beat them to punch. Of course, mm. they're far bigger than Lehman Brothers, and they because of their far bigger derivatives book, it's going to be a, a domino effect that's that's you know felt for a generation. So what's very interesting about all of this is that the United States came out with their statistical numbers, and they're telling us that unemployment is at four point nine percent right now, but. Unemployment has dropped, and they're trying to make the case that everything is fine. But we see so many different things in the economy that are completely falling apart. The Baltic Tri Index fell below the barrier of 300. Trucking is down. Rail traffic is down. Retail stores are closing. How can they even make the case that the economy is fine at this point? Well, actually, the Baltic Dry Index, if you could believe this, is down 62% in the last month. <laughs> and, and when you talk about an all-time low, I mean, the all-time low goes back to when it started in 1986, and now it's way below that all-time low, and it's free-falling. And that is a perfect example of, of why back in October, in October, meaning what, four months ago, I wrote an article said the worst global economy of our lifetimes. But that was before the Baltic Dry Index fell 70% or, percent or whatever it is. Uh, that's before the oil price fell 30% and the, and the, the, the CRB commodity index 20% and before the stock markets crashed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, before a lot of these currencies had their next leg down, which, by the way, coincided, as I said they would, with A, the Chinese yuan devaluation, and B, the Fed's insane, idiotic uh, raising interest rates uh, by even a quarter point. In fact, today, my article that's going to come out in a, you know, probably an hour or so is titled, Will Wednesday, meaning two days from now, be the Yellen reversal, because she has to do her semi-annual uh, Humphrey Hawkins testimony on, on Capitol Hill. And I think, especially with the markets the way they were Friday and today, if they can't turn it around in a big way by then, she's going to have to say something that dramatically changes the course of financial history uh, in, in saying, yeah, we are now uh, done with rate hikes and actually considering um, going the other direction, which is inevitably what she's going to do. But as for you know how they could say the economy is, is better, no one even listens anymore. Um, you know, I wrote years ago, uh, two years ago, I said the last thing is going to be when, when, they, when the BLS, that the Bureau of Labor Statistics, loses all credibility in its job report. And, you know, we've basically done that. And, you know, the icing on the cake was, of course, uh, Friday's report, where they claimed that the unemployment report fell to like, uh, unemployment rate fell to a multi-year low while every aspect of the economy is falling apart. And of course, the, the rest of the unemployment report was as bad as, as ever. I mean, we're talking about horrible jobs. is a, a 2.1 million job seasonal adjustment. All the jobs that were there were the you know low-paying minimum wage jobs. And by the way, if you go to Peter Schiff's latest um, 
uh, podcast on it, and he breaks apart some, you know, some of the more of the myths, you know, that come out of that that jobs report. But the point is, there's a reason why I called the jobs report the island of lies a while ago because it's it's so politically motivated. They will just say anything. But at this point, after especially the last few months as jobs reports, it's so totally discredited. My my view is that in not maybe even now, maybe even the next one or two reports, no one's going to even care anymore about the job report. After my whole life of waiting for Friday, Jobs Friday, no one will care anymore because it'll be as meaningless as, as the most meaningless of, uh, of economic indicators. How is the central bank, the Fed, going to explain that they increased interest rates and now they have to do a complete reversal? Aren't they going to lose all credibility for this? Well, they already have lost all credibility, and they've lost credibility simply for raising rates by claiming that everything's good when, as soon as they did it, everything collapsed even further. Uh, but, you know, the, the way they're going to do it is the way they always do it. They're going to make up an excuse and say it's someone else's fault. Uh, you know, again, it's never their fault. It's always mm-hmm. someone else's fault. It's something that they couldn't see or it's something that's overseas, et cetera, et cetera. You know, everyone will always, I'm sure they'll bring up China. It's China's fault. But the fact is, it's the whole fiat currency regime that's the fault and they are the leaders of that fiat currency regime uh that have destroyed the entire world so they'll they'll find an excuse to you know they'll say it's something that that's not our fault but they'll do it and if the markets you know we're down 200 points the other day we're down 300 points today what if we're down 300 tomorrow and 400 the next day and 500 then they'll just come in with an emergency qe4 but again you know when you have deutsche bank the biggest bank in europe writing a letter Open letter to the bank of uh, to the ECB and the Bank of Japan saying, "Stop lowering interest rates. You're killing us." You realize that the game's over because even the banks that need that have always wanted it the most no longer even want it because it's killing them. There's nothing central banks can do, and they are all every central bank in the world is going to implode in the next I don't know year. I, I can't see it. You know the again. I'm not a big one on timing everything, but the quote you know that I've been saying for the past three or four weeks now is. You know, I don't know how, when exactly, but I can say there's, in my view, there is a zero, okay, zero percent chance that we survive through 2016 without the next 2008, you know, sweeping over the earth. And again, this one is going to be a thousand times worse because there's no safety net. There's no central banks. There's no QE. Well, they'll do QE, but it won't work. All it could do is stay, is, uh, is create hyperinflation. This is the year. There is no way we are getting through it without something horrible happening. And I mean really horrible. Even if the central bank, you know, comes in and they, okay, we have to lower the interest rate, maybe even go negative like Japan now, and they start QE4, this is going to make the situation even worse than it is right now because people are going to look at this and say, okay, we've seen this before. This is going to end up bringing us to absolutely nowhere. The economy will not improve with QE4. That's that's my point. I mean, Bank of Japan said we're not going to lower rates to negative, and then they did it a week later, and then two days later, when the market kept falling because no one's listening anymore to what they're doing, they said, "Oh, but we're going to do more QE. We promise, and we're going to do even lower interest rates. We promise." In fact, they even copied Mario Draghi. They said, "Whatever it takes," and they said, "No limits." They're just so desperate to get anything to work. But the point is, no one is listening, and it's going to be and the coup de grace for the whole world is going to be, A, when Janet Yellen admits it and pretend, stop, pretend, stops pretending this ridiculous, the economy's improving, et cetera. And when she comes out and says, yeah, you know, things are not so good, we're going to have to rescind that rate hike and go negative. That's going to be the coup de grace for everything. But even worse, when, they, when she realizes that it won't work, because everyone's under this, this uh, belief. Actually, no one is under this belief because no one believes it's going to happen. But I, I think if you asked everyone, Today, what do you think would happen if, if the Fed went to negative rates and, and QE4? They go, oh, well, that would save the markets. Everything would be great. And what I'm saying is I don't believe that's the case. That's exactly what the ECB just did. It failed. That's exactly what the Bank of Japan just did. It just failed. And if they try to do that here, it, there's no telling what the ramifications will be on political, economic, social, financial. Every aspect of the world is going to be negatively impacted. And it's not going to result. I can guarantee the one thing it will not result in is the 1% getting richer because the stock market goes up while the economy still goes down. Not going to happen. While we see all this happening, uh, precious metals, gold, silver, they're starting to move up now. I mean, today, I, I think gold is up $37 already. Well, that's I, it's up 16 or, you know, that's it's including from, yes, from right, Friday's yeah. 
uh, close. You know, they don't do it exactly from the morning, but you know, it hit 1197 earlier. Now it's 1191. Uh, silver is up. It silver just broke above its 200-day moving average. And again, you know, I, everyone knows me. No, I'm not a fan of miners just because they're to me they're just risk that I don't need to take. You can take it if you want to. But the fact is that the Huey is up like 40 or 50 percent in the last in the last couple of weeks shows you that the big money is now running into the paper assets. They 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 know the end game is here. They know that the cartel is losing, and it's time to get into the sector. Of course. Once the institutional uh, people get really scared, they're going to start clamoring for the physical gold and silver. And when they do, then it's going to be truly the end game. And in fact, everyone should put on this screen, by the way, the ticker PHYS. That's the Sprott Physical Gold Fund, which just uh, acquired the uh, the Spicer, the, the GTU, the Gold Trust. And now all of a sudden, the discount to net asset value is infinitesimal. The point, the point is... Institutional money is buying this thing so hard that it's almost at a premium to net asset value again. And if it goes there a few percent above that, you can bet Eric Sprott, who runs that fund, is going to do a massive offering. And that's when the institutional money starts coming in and, and buying. And, you know, and, and that's when you have the chain reaction across the physical space. And again, I said earlier in this call, I said, well, we'll keep some suspense about what's going on, the big right. news in the gold market today. Which my my well, I have two articles coming out today. The second one today is called uh, "The Biggest N News in Gold Market History." That's exact today. That's what I wrote today, and it's because I saw that five or six uh, miners quit the LBMA today. They just quit and said, "We're done. We're no longer trading here," uh, including Rio Tinto, which is the second largest miner in the world. And clearly, in my mind, it's because it's because they're sick of the manipulation of paper prices. Even Rio Tinto, which doesn't do much in the silver market, has to be aware of last week's horrendous, heinous silver fixing, where they fixed the paper, the physical price 6% below the paper price for no reason. And you, you saw the largest silver miner in the world complaining, and then bam, all these miners are leaving the exchange. In other words, the miners are finally starting to fight back. And once they start to fight back, there's going to be no one left for the paper manipulators to sell to. Uh, their freight contract. So I believe that this is the beginning of the realization, the rapid realization that the paper market is a fraud and it's going to go down for the count. We will have cash and carry gold and silver markets at some time in the future because like the central banks, the future markets, particularly for gold and silver, I believe will be permanently destroyed. So what's going on with the COMEX? I mean, are, are, are they going to have a problem delivering the gold of course. at some point? Of course. I mean, look, no one can b believe any any number specifically they put out because heck, a they're criminals and b they're run by criminals and b they have a c they have a, a a disclaimer that says the information we put out may not be true. But the fact is, you know, I put together, you know, you put together a mosaic of, of all the things that you see around you, and when you see that the, the gold and silver registered inventories of the comics have both, not one, but both gone down to nothing. There's literally almost no gold and silver left, and there's far more, as we know. Uh, that's demanding the delivery of that little that's there than ever before. And look at the fundamentals. Now you have exploding prices, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So again, what's going on at the COMEX and the LBMA? They're hanging on to their 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 manipulative thread, you know, their manipulative um, uh, grip on the markets by a, a hanging thread right now. And, uh, you know, for all the people who thought it would last forever, the London gold pool lasted only seven years. This horrendous covert Manipulation has lasted, what, 10, 15 years? It'll all be gone. Will it be gone tomorrow? I don't know. Will they be able to hang on for a few more months, a year? I don't know. But my guess is, uh, given what I believe is going on in the economy, in the world, I don't believe that they're going to survive this year either. Uh, we'll wait and see. But either way, how anyone could not be buying some gold silver right now? In the Look, if you're in the rest of the world, you can't buy it. Either it's at record prices. Heck, in Canadian dollars, it's almost at a record high already. Uh, but in the Eastern world and even a lot of the Western Hemisphere, it's not even available. You can't buy it. But here you can still buy it at subsidized prices below the cost of production. And it will go quickly. Remember, we had a major silver shortage back in uh, July, August, September of last year. I assure you in this environment, we will have the same thing. And then eventually we'll have like we had in 2008 where we ran out of absolutely everything around the world, gold and silver. It will happen. And it may happen now. I don't know. Yeah, I think what's happening in this country is that we've been brainwashed that, you know, the dollar is the all powerful currency and gold, eh, you don't really need it. It's just, it looks good on jewelry, but you really don't need it compared to other countries where they realize and they understand that the gold and the silver, 
that is actually money and you need to hold on to that. And here, I don't think people really understand that. And I think it's going to change. And when people start waking up, I think it's going to be a little too late for them. And because gold prices are going to start to skyrocket and you just won't be able to get it at some point. Exactly. You know, I call the uh, gold owners the new 1% because that's all there's going to be room for. Uh, there's not that much gold out there. And the East and the West is taking it up like and have been taking it up like it's going out of style, which it is going out because you won't have any supply of it anymore. And only a handful of people around the world are going to actually have enough of it when it runs out uh, because it will run out. It will be the greatest, let's call it in financial terms, short squeeze in history because there's going to be nothing for sale. And, uh, you know, that's exactly what happened in 2008. And we've had the warning bells when we had shortages in 2011 and 13. And man, we had a huge silver shortage last summer. And uh, but this time around, there's going to be no central banks to save the day. All they're going to do is make it worse. They'll create the, the conditions that start hyperinflations. Um, and uh, and there won't be gold and silver. It just won't be there. So either you buy it now and uh, and or, or you don't buy it and you don't get, get a chance to buy it. That's my view of what's going to happen. A lot of people ask me, um, where should I look to see that things are falling apart and what part of the economy? Is there something um, uh, specific I should be looking at? Is there any part of the economy that people should be looking at to see and to realize that, oh, yeah, this is it. It's it's starting to come come down now and now I should start to worry. Well, I mean, there's so many things. I mean, when you're talking about commodities at 40-year lows and currencies around the world at all-time lows and high-yield bonds collapsing – and Treasury, look, remember the Fed, quote, raised rates a month ago, and now the 10-year Treasury yield is en route to maybe breaking its all-time low in the next week or two. That's how fast the rates are falling. Credit default swaps are exploding. Bank Banks are finally falling apart. The whole tech bubble, too. The unicorns, the, all these, they're all falling apart. And not just falling apart. We're talking about most of the market is amidst 2008 right now. It's just been they've held the major averages up, or as I call them, the very, very last to go because they're the most manipulated. But now they're all falling apart, too. There's nothing le There's nothing to look at that isn't screaming this. And again, when I say that Deutsche Bank is telling the central bank, stop lowering rates because you're killing us, it shows you that that's how close we are at the end. I mean, of course, if they raised rates, they would kill them even faster. Uh, but there'll be no rate hikes uh, in history. There'll never be a rate hike again until we have hyperinflation, at which point it won't matter. Everything will have been destroyed. So you can look, there's nothing you can't look at that's not saying the same thing right now. And, and frankly, if you want to look at one thing, just look at the Dow. The fact that they can't rescue the Dow, that it keeps plummeting, shows that they're losing control. The fact that gold and silver prices are surging despite every effort to hold them down shows they're losing control. And of course, as far as economic data and commodities and currencies and every other market, they've already lost control. When Deutsche Bank finally completely collapses on itself what kind of ripple effect is this going to have throughout other banks and that's assuming deutsche bank is the first one to go right i mean there's plenty of others look at the whole italian banking system they're halting them limit down every day it may be unicredit the biggest bank in, uh, in italy that goes first it may be one of those french banks that have exposure to to the pigs i mean they're saying that greece is falling apart again right now but if deutsche bank goes i mean deutsche bank is i don't know the numbers but I would have to guess two to three times larger than Lehman Brothers. I mean, easily. They're the biggest bank in Europe, and they have the biggest derivatives book. Uh, so, you know, it'll cause a daisy chain of derivatives failures around the world, and there's nothing to save them this time, nothing. No bailouts, no TARP, no bail-ins, nothing. It will be chaos. They will try them all. They'll do their negative interest rates and QE10 and, and, and all these kind of things. Everything will fail. And the scary thing is we have all these elections going on from here, uh, to France next year. I mean, uh, they're having this Britain exit uh, Brexit vote probably this year. I mean, we're going to see splintering, major uh, political uh, and social splintering in the next 12 months. Catalonia, Spain will definitely secede this year. That's a quarter of, of, of the Spanish economy right there. I mean, we're talking about really, really bad things are coming. And I'm not happy about it. I've just been telling you this is what's going to happen for a long time. And you know what? Now people will start to listen. When you say bad, like how bad is it going to get in this country for the everyday person? Don't know, but all I could say is when you what we've had our, our standard of living has been the highest in the world because of the fraudulence of the dollar being the reserve currency. And as the dollar loses its purchasing power and its domination around the world, we will have the biggest fall of social uh, of, of, of standards of living of any country in the world. So you can say, wow, it's really going to be bad in Greece. Yeah, but Greece's standard of living has already collapsed. 
we're still out there, people getting, you know, liar loans for houses and subprime loans for cars and student loans and all kinds of things that, that they, you know, they couldn't afford anywhere else and that they're now going to have to pay back, uh, you know, et cetera. And our government is the most indebted in the world. So again, we are going to have the biggest fall of any country. What will it be like on average? I don't know. There's a worst case scenario, which is pretty darn bad. There are, be- there are best case scenarios, which are significantly better. But even the best case scenario is going to be a major change of life. I mean, picture, picture this. Picture if, if 2008, picture how everyone, how your life was in 2008, you know, when your stocks are crashing and your jobs were being lost. Picture that, but not going away in three months because the Fed uh, gets the market back up. Staying that way for a long time and getting worse. And then people not like career politicians like Bush and Obama and Hillary Clinton, you know, people who are really dangerous getting around and, and, and getting in office around the world and doing very dangerous things in the name of nationalism. Do you think at this point, I mean, last time when you mentioned 2008, we saw uh, the bailouts where, you know, they gave trillions of dollars out to different banks to save the banks and nothing for the people. This time there are no bailouts and this time they're looking at bail-ins. So this time it's going to be, God, I, I can't even imagine, like 20 times or a hundred times worse than it was before because this time with bail-ins they're going to shut down the banks they're going to take people's money from- well that's a that's the thing they can't bail out because there's no will for it and there's no money for it yeah and of course if you bail in bailing is even worse than bailing out because bail a bailout is a is a is an indirect tax on people you know via inflation but if they actually said, well, we're going to bail, we're going to take all the IRAs, which they will. And I'm screaming to everyone I've been for years, get out of freaking IRAs before the government takes them. Uh, if they do that, you're going to have massive social unrest and political uprisings and revolutions. I mean, there, there's ramifications. You can't just be like, oh, well, we're taking your money and moving on. You take the money and this place will, will have a civil war here. Uh, you know, it'll be like the, the, the Russian or French Revolution. So. You know, they, it sounds good on paper, just like saying, oh, well, they'll confiscate the gold. Yeah, you confiscate the gold and the next day it becomes priceless around the world and people will kill for it. And they'll kill anyone trying to take it from anyone because the dollar and all the currencies will be worthless. So, again, you know, the more draconian they try to be, the more political and social ramifications there are going to be. Do you think the U.S. is going to look like a third world country when this whole thing falls apart? And is that the level of our life? style is that where we're going to end up well again that's the worst case scenario i can't say what scenario will be but you know when you're talking about falling from the the highest standards of living in the world to at least the mean and usually you overshoot especially when you're liquidating the biggest debt in history it will certainly feel like the third world compared to where it was uh, today and certainly where it was a decade ago uh you know will it become like being in a, a you know poor villages in Africa, you know, I don't know if it gets that bad, but there's going to be a lot of parts of the country that are going to feel that way. And certainly the big money centers where everyone has, has believed that they're invincible, the Californias and the New Yorks and the Washington DC areas, they're going to be decimated in terms of standard of living and the, and the, uh, the social and political environment. So I don't know what the worst case scenario is. All I do is tell people prepare for it. I mean, buy some gold, food, all that kind of stuff. Be ready, you know, network with your neighbors, have a, a game plan. Because if you don't, and the worst case scenario does come, you're going to die. I mean, you're literally going to die. So you have to prepare now. And God, for God's sakes, if you're in a, a place like America where you can actually still get precious metals at these ridiculous prices, what on earth are you waiting for? Andy, I really appreciate you being on the X-22 Report Spotlight. Thank you for bringing us up to date on what's going on. You do have a uh, free seminar coming up. Can you tell people a little bit about that? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, You know, myself and Andy Sheckman, Andy Sheckman is the president and co-founder of Miles Franklin. So he's been selling precious metals for over two decades. And together we've been traveling around. We just started traveling around the country. We just do these free, completely free. There's dinner included. It's a Q&A wrap session. They last three, four hours. And you just come and you ask us anything you want about anything. And we talk and it's an enlightening night. And all the people in the room are similarly you know, like-minded people who think just like we do. And, and we just had our first one uh, in Denver, where, where I live here, two weeks ago, and we had 130 people. Well, our next two are scheduled. The first one is very soon. It's Friday, February 26th in Minneapolis, which is uh, Miles Franklin's hometown. The second one that we have scheduled is Wednesday, March 16th in Phoenix. 
And uh, all you have to do is, you, if you want to go, is email me at ahoffman at milesfranklin.com or call us at 800-822-8080. And what I'll do is I'll put the links uh, for those two seminars um, at the bottom of this YouTube video so everyone can find out where it is and it'll make it easier. You can just click on them. It'll bring you right to it so you can uh, find the number in the email there.